Alrighty, we are over here at the lathe. I've uh, just done some stuff in advance, not to bore you, but I got a piece of 1018 tucked up. I've already uh, drilled it out about a hundred thou uh, less of the smaller diameter of the taper. I've already got my compound set. Didn't bother filming that. There's plenty of YouTube videos showing how to set up your compound to cut a taper. So, and they probably will explain them better than me anyways. <laughs> so we're just gonna start uh, chewing away. I'll get you a little footage here, but uh, you know, it's gonna take a while. So let's uh, rock and roll. <laughs> Okay guys, let me bring you up to speed. So here's the piece we've been working on and the taper is not right. So she is off. As you can see, she's sloppy. So <clears throat> I went and decided to try to measure it you know, as precise as I could. So let me get that Persian blue off of there so I don't get it all over me because it's good like that, like Annie sees. So, uh, I thought I had my calipers handy. Nope, there they are. <clears throat> okay, so what I ended up doing is I took this block, took my caliper, and then measured off of this so she wouldn't move and she'd be straight because it's always tough trying to, you know, measure. Got that number. Added a one inch, one, two, three block. Held that nice and tight and straight. Took my caliper and then measured that way. So got two measurements, pretty you know, accurate as I could and exactly one inch apart. And uh, let me show you the numbers. Hopefully you guys can see this on the pad. So measuring the first time, I got uh, one inch, 325 thou on the large. 1 inch 137 on the small, which gives me a difference of 188 thou over 1 inch. So then I did it again. I got 1327 and 138 gives you a difference of 189. So I feel pretty confident we're probably right there. So I took half of that, 94 thou, set my compound over an inch, and we did a test fit piece out of aluminum, cut that angle and she feels really good so pretty confident that's it um you know this lathe has got metric hardware on it it has british standard whitworth hardware on it so i'm not 100 percent sure this is a standard taper now there is a i don't know if you can see the prussian blue in there but we got contact all the way around so like i said i think we're pretty much the best we can be now the book, uh, you know, I thought it was a one in five. I thought it was 200 thou measuring the way I did. And I was off. Now they do show a one in five and a half at 0.181. So it may be that. I mean, obviously I've only got a difference of about, uh, you know, six, seven thou measuring it. So, you know, but that fits pretty good. So I'm just going to leave the compound as it is. And we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, use this piece here because this is still good but we'll just i'll just drill it and then we'll cut the taper on this side and i can grip it with this so that's what i've been doing that's where we're at and um let's get back to throwing some chips well i got the stock all prepped drilled out and now i am just boring the step there's a uh you know a straight part on the 
taper that's closest to the headstock. So this will just kind of slide and then we'll start cutting the taper from there. So I am just chewing that out. A little bit at a time. Only going 400 thou deep. All right, let me take another bite. I'll bring you guys back once I'm done with that and we start uh, cutting the taper. So it's time to start chewing out the bore. Make it tapered. Just taking small bites. It's only a half inch boring bar and you know, I got a good couple inches to stick out and I am not in a rush, so. Now I'd like to only have to make this part once, so. And just to take it easy. Okay, so let me bring you guys up to speed. I finished the taper bore. It fits pretty good on that uh, shaft. So now what we need to do is we got to turn this OD to get a nice uh, about a little over a thou press fit for the bore on the pulley. So I'm just going to chew this baby down. Get my zero here, about right there. Let me take off about 30. <clears throat> See if the chips will break. Oh, not like that. Take a little bit less. Well, fingers crossed, this will be the last pass. I'm shooting for it to be a tad bit large. And then I'll just uh, file it or sandpaper it, you know what I mean? It's easier to take it off than trying to put it back on. Got a lot of time in this part already, so. Gotta make sure Bozo doesn't uh, sneak in the door here. Finished the pass, been letting it cool down, still a tad bit warm, but so we are seven fifty four and about eight tenths. All right, cool. So the actual Tool pressure was uh, consistent because I was shooting for just a little smidgen large. Because we need the uh, we need this to be about 753 and a half, so we're what one thou and uh, four tenths large. So not a problem. I'll uh, get some uh, paper and we'll bring it down to size. Excellent.
think we are almost there, if not already there. One fifty three. Huh. Uh, you guys be able to see that or not. So, 153, and the line looks like it's 6 tenths, so I will take that. Nice. I think we sanded it about the same. So, sweet. Makes me feel good. We got that part done. We didn't trash it. All right. Let me uh, break a couple edges now. So basically, um, well, I'd say this part is done, but we took out a part it off and we still got to cut a keyway. We're getting very close. Maybe one more pass. See how we're doing. Seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-eight. We're at seven seventy-eight right there. We've been cutting pretty straight. I don't think I've got a taper. Five, six, seven. Yeah, so perfect. Seven seventy-eight. All right. Let me see here. I want to try it one pass and go for the gusto, or. Take two smaller passes. Might be safer to take two smaller. All right, guys, it's time to get a keyway in this taper sleeve. I was debating back and forth where to try it on the shaper, but I haven't done one on the shaper yet, so I didn't want this <laughs> to be my uh, maiden voyage and screw it up. Plus, I got to make a boring bar grind up some high-speed steel so I got a little bit of work before I can start uh, doing some keyways it's on the list of things to do but you know just uh, never enough time in the shop so I haven't gotten that far to get it ready to cut keyways so I figured I'll just go ahead and buy a six mil brooch and we will broach it the conventional way so what you're looking at now is the tapered uh, Roach guide that we got to make that'll go in here to cut the keyway. So I didn't bore you with just the uh, turning of the blank, but we're uh, all ready to go. Compound has not changed, still the same angle. So we should be good to go. It's going to start chewing it off. Be slow going to start with. So we start cutting that taper full length. I'm just taking about a uh, tenth out bite at a time, no rush. I'll bring you back when I made some progress.
just finished up and we have got a nice fit. Bottoms out of that shoulder just right and the taper is grabbing it. So, excellent. Now we need to do is uh, go over to the mill. We'll get this set up so we can uh, cut the keyway. So we are set up over here at the Accelo mill to be able to cut us a slot for that brooch to ride in. And I got her dialed in. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I think that's pretty darn good just to cut a slot for a brooch. What do you think? <laughs> so I got lucky. I've got, uh, don't have a 10 millimeter end mill because that's basically the thickness of that brooch. But I do have a 0 .3906, a 25 Four flute, sexy looking carbide end mill. So that is close enough to 10 mil. I think we'll be good to go. And thank you, Rick. You gave me a whole bunch of uh, end mills from your work when you guys uh, closed up. So I still appreciate them. I use them when I can. Cut through the shoulder, made my first pass. I'm just taking it easy since it's a little bit sketchy, but uh, so far so good. So let's get her done, right? Hopefully this won't get all over the GoPro lens. Just scale it back just a little bit there. <laughs> 